All set? Great. So, um, so what we're going to do, talk through today is basically how to set up your rig. So me and Rich are going to go through the base settings for setting up your rig, and then we'll talk about sail controls for different kind of conditions, wind conditions. Um, so the first thing you need to do before you put your rig up is we need to work out um, the spreaders. Okay. So spreader. So the first thing to do is measure is to measure how long your spreaders are. So the length is from the mast to the end of the spreaders. So the maximum you're allowed is 45 centimeters and the range is generally somewhere between 40 to 45 centimeters. The, the, general, the, the general kind of setup is that um, if you are heavy, so however, whether you think you're heavy or you think you want more power, you want to have longer spreaders. And if you are light and you find yourself being overpowered, you want to have shorter spreaders. Um, me and Rich will be at the maximum and you can be obviously kind of anywhere in between. The next thing you need to measure is the deflection. So this is how much the, when you put the rig tension on, how much it's going to affect the bend of the mast. And the way that you do this is that you put a straight edge like a batten between the back of the wires on the shrouds just above the, um, the spreaders. So where the shrouds go through the spreaders and then you're going to measure, it's just below you there, you're going to measure from the mast, so that's inside the track, to the bottom of the batten. And I am at um, 14 centimetres, uh, Rich is at 13 centimetres. Um, and so obviously kind of the, the, the general rule is that if you want if you want more power, you want your spreaders further forward, so you'd want uh, less deflection. So I'm at, you know, Rich is heavier than me, he's at 13 centimetres, I'm slightly lighter, I'm at 14 centimetres. If I was very light, I don't know what the other light guys do if they, if they know, but you would want that to be a longer distance, so that you'd want that to be 15, 16, 17 centimetres, uh, you know, as, as a general rule. I don't know, Dave, do you measure yours or? I have measured it, but I can't remember. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So, I mean, maybe, you know, like kind of you could you could kind of go to someone if depending on how heavy you are, you could go to someone, you know, if you are heavyweight. So I'm I'm 100, you know, in my birthday suit, I'm 100 kilos. Too much information, Keith. Sorry. But, um, you know, and I should be about 95, um, but I will be by the nationals. Um, <laughs> and that's about that's about right for me. But, you know, if you're lighter than that, then obviously you want to have them shorter and swept further back. This is all to do with three bend of the mast. So the further you sweep them back, the more you drive the mast forward. The further you put them forward, you drive the mast back. Yeah. So that's why. Okay, so so now we've got the spreaders set right, we'll put the mast up. Just stick it up. Um, now the, the mast foot base, the base kind of set up. Okay, so the next thing we do, um, we're going to put on the right amount of rig tension. So um, for this boat, 75 kilograms. Keep adding it on. I've, I've marked mine off with a little meter down here, so um, I should be about there. I reckon it's 75. Okay, looks a bit high. Okay, sorry, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm looking, because I'm normally sat back here, aren't I? So. There you go, there you go. There you go. So that's 75 kilograms. So now we've got the right amount of, um, of tension on the rig. We've set the spreaders up. So the next thing we want to do is we want to measure the rake of the mast. In order to do that, we need to first set up the right length of tape measure. In order to set your, date, your tape measure up, you are measuring five 0.4 meters. All right. So come down a bit. Okay, cool. So 5.4 meters to the top of the white band at the gooseneck. Okay, so now we're 5.4 meters and then we run it back to the back of the boat and we measure to the top of the transom and the base setting is 6.3 to 6.33 meters. So I'm at 6.31. Um, and that is my, and that, and that is then your base, kind of what I call a datum setting. So you've got 75 kilograms of, of, um, of pressure on the rig. 
and you've got 6.3 meters or 6.31 meters to the, to the back of the boat. All right, let's take that back down again. Um, so now your rig is set up and that is, I think just locked off, mate. Okay, okay. Um, so, th so this is the setup for kind of maximum power. So perhaps a day like today where you've got, you know, I, well, it depends on your weight really. But for me, I would definitely be set up like this for a day like today. Um, so what we're going to do now is talk about um, how to set your rig up for different kind of wind conditions. So we'll talk about first is datum, right? So datum is, is a day like today. Mac, you want maximum power. Um, what, what you would have is you'd have your, your rig in its, in its central position. So as we've set up, um, going upwind, you would, um, you would be kind of pulling on a main sheet so that the um, so that the boom was broadly just over these rear toe straps. For me, because I'm rear sheeting, um, my, where my bobbles are set up is that kind of when I've got the main, the main cranked on fully, um, it would be right above, above those, those toe straps. Um, if you've got a central sheeting system, um, I hate you like, like the plague because yesterday when it was light, you could point so much higher and squeeze, squeeze us central uh, main sheet guys off, but you know, it, it all works out in the wash. On the kicker, um, I would, um, well, my, my kicker is set up so that I can measure it off of a gauge here. Um, I, I would uh, have uh, basically the kicker probably one or two centimeters further on than the, than the main sheet would otherwise achieve. So you pull the main sheet all the way on and then you pull a, a couple of centimeters of extra kind of kicker on. My outhaul would be fully out. So um, fully out is basically where that white patch is. It's roughly a, a, a full hand's length between the deepest part of the sail and the top of the boom. Um, I wouldn't have any Cunningham on going upwind um, and I think that's it going up windy just obviously hike keep the boat very very flat um, you should practice kind of basically sailing up wind and loosely holding the the tiller extension so that you feel the effect of of where your body weight is and h2 actually wants to sail a couple of degrees to on top of you to windward and that's where you'll have absolutely no there'll be no pressure on the on the tiller at all um, on a reach, um, you'd leave the rig tension. So this is again in kind of medium wind conditions. You'd leave the rig tension where it is. Um, I might just let the kicker off a, a very small amount just to give the, the sail a bit more kind of depth, but not a lot. I think a lot of people when they're starting to sail on H2 let off too much kicker when on a reach. All the power just goes out the top of the sail. So it's just a little, you just want to let it off just a tiny bit and we'll, we'll work on that today. And on a run, um, you want to be kind of like letting the kicker off um, as far as you can. If you let it all the way off, it looks like a big kind of you know, shopping bag. You don't want that. You want to snug it just back on again so that the sail's got kind of like looks like a sail rather than a shopping bag. Um, but you want it all the way off. Um, in, in all these conditions, you should be sitting kind of like when you, if you're hiking, your, your leg, your, your front leg should be right up against the thwart. And when you're going downwind, you'd be sitting on, on the thwart um, and down, you know, either on a reach or a run, that's where you'd be sitting. Um, if you've got swinging spreaders when you're going downwind, or even if you've got fixed spreaders like this on the Selden, um, I would be letting the rig tension off just to kind of like help the, um, the sail kind of look, uh, you'll, you'll see it. It, it, it make the sail look better. The bottom battens don't deflect quite so much. So if I'm on a dead run, um, definitely be letting the kind of rig tension off just to kind of let the sail kind of take its right shape on, on, a, on a dead run. Okay, so that's, that's your kind of max power conditions. When it's light, basic setting before you leave the beach, your rig should go up half a hole. So um, half a hole is basically you switch sides um, and goes up a hole. So the mast goes forward. And um, yesterday, I was, I mean, basically I was letting off that much rig tension upwind. So it's kind of whatever, however you want to measure that. It's, I mean, I've got it marked. So I would go from this mark into those, into those two marks there. Um, I don't think it will register rig tension, will it? Okay. 
Okay. That, that's that's kind of that's my light wind setting. That's 33 kilos. All right. So 33 kilos. The rig tension um, is you know where, where I where I was in the in the in the light stuff yesterday. Um, again, um, personally, because uh, I'm off boom. I've no choice but to set the, the sail using the kicker. So I was actually using probably a, not a dissimilar amount of kicker to what I would have been using uh, on, a, on a medium wind day, um, but I was letting my main sheet go quite a long way out. Uh, and those that were racing yesterday, um, probably, you know, someone commented it to me over curry, you know, that you can either go high or low. It doesn't really actually make that much difference in terms of, you know, distance over the water. Um, I was going lower and faster because I'm heavy and the light guys with central me uh, were going, you know, they were going uh, higher and, and slower, but it was all kind of working out in the wash. And it's just different sailing styles. You need to practice both and see which ones you like. Um, so I, I would I would be setting the sail with a kicker. So that's how you it basically. I mean, literally, I could almost let go of to some degree. I could let go of the main sheet, and the the main wouldn't actually go that far. You know, it would reach a point where it wouldn't go out any further. And um, you know, but the main sheet is really, really your enemy. I think in the really light winds, you want you want to have it ease right off. Certainly, you want to make sure that this is never kind of more than inside of the toe straps. Um, so it's, it is quite a way out. Um, on the reach, when you go on the top mark, um, you want to pull the, the, the rig tension back on. So it's never fast to be sailing with a floppy rig on a reach. Um, so the rig tension would come back on to, um, well, Rich goes way past. Rich goes, don't tell Keith, probably bends his boat a bit. So Rich pulls on like gorilla amounts of rig tension on a reach. I just take it back to 75 kilos. I don't make that much difference. Um, in the light winds, definitely the kicker wants to come off quite a ways. You'll see it, it's basically, um, it's really hard to describe on the beach, but we'll, we'll do some stuff out there with you. It's all about, you're looking at basically the, 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 from the third baton up, that's where you're looking as to, you know, when you pull the kicker on, you'll see it kind of changing the angle of, of, of the sail. Um, and on a reach, you want to be kind of like, the kicker is quite critical to boat speed. A lot of people yesterday had the wrong amount of kicker on, on, on the reaches, I think. Um, then on the run, um, really hard in light winds, very slow to go dead downwind, like almost terminally slow. Um, so you want to kind of, it's better, much better to heat it up, kind of almost to a broad reach and do, do some jibes. Um, be practicing jibes today. You can actually, um, you know, if you're good at roll jibing, it's, it's a very important skill to have, um, to be able to kind of come out of the jibe and, and the boat kind of be, 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 be moving nicely. Um, okay, so that's light winds. So when it, gets, when it gets heavy, so whatever heavy is, is gonna depend on your weight. Um, heavy for Rich and me is gonna be, you know, biblical for some of you. Um, uh, but once you're overpowered, so you're hiking and you, you need to get rid of some power, the steps that you can take are um, basically you go through you go through a kind of an escalation if you like. So for me, first thing that I would do is I'd be pulling on a little bit more kicker. Um, as most people have noted, there will come a point where when you pull the kicker on, you get a crease from the spreaders down to the end of the sail, and that's your indication that you've got too much kicker on. When you see that crease, you you've gone too far. So you back your kicker off a little bit. Next thing I would do would be kind of the Cunningham and the outhaul would be pulled in pretty much together. Um, you know, I don't think there's much of a much of a difference between the two. Just what you're looking just to be flattening the sail off. Um, Cunningham is probably the most effective um, in terms of depowering, just because it really, you know, it really uh, takes the power out the top of the, the sail. Um, and once you're once you've maxed out that, so once you've kind of like you, you know your your sail, I, I never pull it completely bar tight. I think the um, you know, once it starts vibrating against the boom, when you start hearing dug, 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 that to me is, is probably a bit too tight. And maybe if you're Dave, you'd have to do it, but, but, I, but I think that's too tight and you just want to back it off a tiny bit just so it's not going, it's not flapping against the, the, the boom. Um, and Cunningham, I don't really measure it. It's the only control on my boat that I don't really measure. It's either on or it's, it's not. I, I, I very rarely even load it, frankly. So it has to be blowing pretty big for me to even put it through the sail really um 
Most times the race officer sent us in before I start thinking about pulling on, if I'm being honest. So. <laughs> but if you're light, you'll definitely be using it. Um, and then, and then your, last, your last weapon before you head to the beach is, um, is raking the rig. So um, basically, when it starts getting that, that windy, uh, the rig tension comes off. How much is off? Well, it basically is as far off as you can still have kicker to pull on and get the kicker tight. So um, obviously, as you let the rig tension off, the rig's going to come back, and that's going to close the gap between the boom and the kicker. And there will come a point where the rig is too far back and you can't pull on the kicker, you can't close the, the kicker off, right? So I basically would let the rig tension off quite a lot. I mean, it's, it's a good, you know, it's more than you imagine. And the rig is very, very floppy at that point. Um, the boom comes down, it becomes lower. So you gotta watch your head when you tack. Um, but basically you wanna let it right off and that will rake the rig back, depower the rig. When you do that, you will have to pop the centerboard up. So the centerboard will have to come up um, probably about that far. So if the, from the back of the plate to there, it's a good kind of, it's, you know, it's, it's good, it's further than you think. Um, at that point, it's probably big waves. Um, so the reason that you're doing that is because when you rake the rig, you're gonna get a bunch of weather helm. The boat's gonna be, you know, it's gonna, the boat's gonna feel like it's trying to kill you. So popping the centerboard up, it just balances the boat back out again. And also once it's that windy, you don't really want to be kind of tripping over the plate when the gusts hit. So it just helps you kind of keep the boat flat. Um, so yeah, now you've left let the rig tension off, you pull, you snug the kicker back on because you're taking the slack out of the whole system. Um, and, uh, and, and, and if it gets past that, then head to the beach, basically. There's no. problem. No. When you do get, when you do get to, the, to the top windward mark, obviously rig tension back on, otherwise it's gonna get very scary. Um, so rig tension comes back on. Um, I, obviously, I mean, technically, yeah, if you can, outhaul and cutting them back off, most people probably don't worry that much about it because if it's that windy, they're just holding on and having some fun. Um, and, um, and, and, and actually on a reach, I'm not sure I'd let that much kick her off, maybe a little bit, um, but, but again, not that much on a really windy reach. Um, when it comes to jibe, you might want to let a little bit off. Um, otherwise you might, you know, the boom's going to hit the water and yeah, we'll see. That's my, always been my mistake, right, Rich? <laughs> always forget to let the kicker off before a windy jump. Um, and put some centerboard down. Yeah, yes, and put some, yeah, centerboard goes down. On a run, um, it's basically, on a, on a windy day, it's how brave you want to be. Um, so fast, you know, you're going to go faster if you let the kicker off, um, but it's also going to get sketchy really, really fast. So, um, you know, you just got to go out there and practice and see what your, 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 you're kind of comfortable with i know personally when i'm when i'm sailing down downwind and it's windy i've got the tiller and the main sheet in one hand but the main sheet i'm not moving it um i'm just basically playing the kicker the whole time as the gusts hit you, you know and it gets sketchy you're pulling the kicker on and as soon as the gusts hit, you know you're, you're letting the kicker off and it very rarely ends up in the cleat it's, it's basically, I'm basically sailing downwind using the kicker um so especially if you're on a lake or it's gusty, yeah, that is going, you know, that is being adjusted the whole time, all the way, all the way up and down the, all the way down the run. Um, I guess last thing on, on, on centerboard, obviously, um, when it's very, when it is light wind, I personally don't, I mean, yesterday I wasn't using my tether. I have a tether which stops the centerboard going up more than 45 degrees. Um, the reason I have that is because when it's very windy, um, if you're going down a reach, the centerboard can pop up unless you've got the friction plate on really, really tight. I prefer to have a plate that's easy to pull up and down, um, and therefore I use a tether so that the centerboard doesn't pop up and scare the living daylights out of you. But when it's light winds, I mean, yesterday on the runs, I didn't have any centerboard down at all. So my centerboard was totally up. So you can't do that if you've got the tether on. So that's why. All right, I think I think that's it for the televised part. Um, questions? Hey, Rich, how far back? Because there's, there's somebody else wrestling with this. Tim, I think. Um, I'm gonna take that. Sorry, then you're, you'll be recorded. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you. How far back from the boo from the mast is your um, Vang attachment point? Right. Jim. No, give me that. Right, okay. Um, so. There's been some. There's been some kind of like um, playing around with how far back the um, the Vang attachment is. 
Um, yeah, that goes uh, through there. There's a hole. The, you know, the sure. So, yeah, thanks. Oh, don't worry, mate. It's a. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, sell them. Oh, there we go. Let's do it. So, there's been some. Um, right, so, mine is. Um, 52 centimetres. No, the underside where the shaft is. Okay. Low. That ultimately, that's what matters. 44 centimetres. From the end of the boom. From the end of the boom to where to to the to where the webbing the webbing is. 44. Yeah. 44 centimetres. Rich Rich is further forward than that. So he's, he's got a shorter distance. I don't know. James has has played with that. The reason for this is because you if you've got your if you've got your attachment back here, it's driving the boom forward and creating a lot of pre-bend. So the further you can pull it down rather than drive it, the better for the heavy weights. Yeah. And I've done, the the I've done the opposite. You've gone back. So, yeah, same. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like not quite as far forward as Rich, um, but I find that, yeah, I mean, it's just where, where I like it, but um, it's personal choice. It, 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 when you're starting out, it's not something I think is is the most critical thing. To be really honest, I'd much rather, you know, well, my advice would be time. time I mean, I started sailing these boats six years ago. I don't know that I've spent more time on the water than anyone else, but I'd be willing to bet that I had. And I just think, you know, more time. If you've got an hour, go spend it on the water rather than bimbling with the boat. Is going to be worth so much more to you and once you've worked once the, the boat setup starts setting, slowing you down fine then let's let's sort that out but um time on the water is, is critical i think that's it uh, any other sorry any other questions um the, the other thing which which i'm amazed I, I asked someone the other day um for me i mean setting up your your hiking straps i don't know if people have done that but you know having them kind of like so so that you know that that is the you know the maximum that that you can possibly take um, is really I mean I I think that the, the three set the three controls that I play with the most kicker rig tension and, and hiking straps I actually thought about putting hiking straps up here so I could get to them easier um, but especially if you're a lake sailor really important like at the bottom of the beat you need them fully off and by the time you get to the top if it's light you, you, you got to have them back on if you're not connected into the boat and hiking it's going to be really really hard Okay, um, cool. I think that's it for the rig setup. Um, it's half past ten, so thanks, Keith. So let's get out as soon as you want. Um, we'll we'll get out there, and we'll, we're basically going to be down. If you sail right, right in the middle of the, right down the middle of the of the lake, we'll be down there. You'll see us. We're in an orange rib, um, and we'll have a couple of I think orange dumpy marks. Right. Yeah,